What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million. In this video today, we have Michael's K67S 1000 RR. We're gonna attempt to change this rear master cylinder to this gale speed master cylinder. If you stick around, you'll see why we're gonna try to do this. This hasn't been done before. And uh, the reason why we're using this is you probably have seen me use this on an R1 before. This has an integrated reservoir piece that you could put on. It's not really plug and play. But I thought it'd be cool to show you guys when we get bikes like this here that we try to fit some of the parts that no one's fitted before because we have an idea of maybe making it cleaner by removing all this hose and the reservoir from there. And this is kind of what it takes to do it. I hope we'll be able to do it because if you picked out the words that I used was very carefully, I said, I'm gonna attempt it and we're gonna try it. Michael doesn't want to pay for a gym membership, so he just puts Loctite on everything as much as he can in case he takes it off, it becomes a workout for him. I don't have money anymore for a gym membership. I spend everything in Motomillion. This is the plunger from the stock rear master, and this is the piece that, the bracket to hold it onto the reservoir. Question is the length, right? So we might have to cut the rod. Give it a try. It's tight by hand, but not tight like that. There you go, you see? So it's going in? Yeah. There's no way I want to hold it, but we got to move it now. Take it out. No, no, keep it, keep it. Let's measure it. How do we do the cutting? This is all the way, so we cannot even like I can maybe make the thread on this thing, but it's still way too long. It's not even like close. No, look, this is like really compressed. Yeah. You know? It is definitely too long and this doesn't move, huh? Well, the one way is to try to move this out and you put a washer here. A washer will hold the spring. We could try it. So it doesn't fit there, you know, so it's definitely like way too long. Yeah, and the rod uh, is long. We're just trying to find an alternate way to maybe, to. yeah. You think this is too long? Mm, maybe not. Yeah. We just have to cut it, but the, the, how does the spring stay there? Yeah, we put washer, like you said. The washer is to hold the spring in place, because right now we have nothing to hold the spring in place. The washer will be able to hold the spring for the, this is the return spring for the pedal. Just goes like that. And then we're gonna just tighten it. Burp. It could be a millimeter larger on the outer diameter, but it fits nicely. It's literally we're cutting out the half of it. It's all stick out. All for a rear master cylinder, huh? No, all for a million videos. If it worked. If. We still don't know, we still don't know, but we already ruined one and I didn't pay for it yet. I'm gonna put the red spring. No, the red is too much. But it's red. Put a red spring, but you don't see the spring. <laughs> Those are the details. I yeah. put the gold tape and you don't see the gold tape. You see it from here, so. So 
So why we, did we do this? The rear set is threaded right here. And these were also threaded right here. And then when you try to tighten them, it was pulling up a gap. And Michael took the executive decision of threading them because this doesn't need to be threaded. Look how nice. I think it's, it's becoming a lost art, if you want to call it an art. I know some people are going to get angry for me saying it an art, but I hear this so often from you guys that you guys say you guys take a part to an installer. Let's call, them a, let's call them an installer because, you know, I guess some are mechanics, some of them are just installers and they refuse to do stuff like this, to try to figure stuff out for, for people to install some custom stuff. Or when we send the parts that fit, they outright say it doesn't fit and it doesn't work. But um, yeah, I just, it, it gets frustrating as an enthusiast because we do other things for, um, for hobby other than motorcycles. And I hear this often from some people not knowing that, you know, you wrench on your own stuff and they just outright come and tell you, oh no, you can't do that. But, and I think this video was partly to show you guys that when you see some fitment stuff on our website, we actually go through all this trouble, which I don't call this trouble. This is kind of fun for us to figure out to get stuff to work, that we actually take these steps to make sure that we've tried it, it does work, and then if there is a way to do it that's like this, we'll either modify these parts and send them to you after they're modified, or we'll let you know how to do it. But, you know, that's, uh, that's something to consider. So what Michael actually is doing here is, is making sure that there's at least a little bit of free play on here so that your brakes aren't dragging. And especially since this bike has carbon wheels, that's very important not to heat up that rear brake uh, more than it needs to, because then that's when you run into problems with uh, carbon wheels failing. Yeah, same thing uh, like on anything, like on the clutch, you have a little free play, on the brakes, you have a little free play as well, you know, so you don't compress the, the master all the time. Why we started this thing to begin with, we're going to be installing our integrated reservoir onto our master cylinder and you gotta take that C-clip off. Oh my God. That does look good. Right? This was the ultimate goal, was to remove the reservoir from there. We did install a Rizoma Reservoir on the last video if you guys watched us, but the whole idea was actually to delete the reservoir from that area. Done. Now that we're at the bleeding stage, we're gonna be using this tool. We haven't shown this to you before. This is a diagnostic tool for the BMW bikes and it's very, very helpful. Not only it helps you change your service reminder dates when that service reminder light comes on that you could turn it off if you're doing your own old changes. It allows you to run service functions like run the ABS pump when you're bleeding it. So if there's anything stuck in terms of an air bubble in the ABS pump, you could push it through the system. So you guys are wondering what this is. This is a conversion harness. This is a 10 pin model. This is for the older bikes for 2017, I believe in older. In 2018, they switched to the OBD2 ports on the bikes just like this one. So if you want, these, they, these come in with the OBD2 ports on it. We have this one because this is a professional unit. What does the professional unit mean? It means that this can work on all bikes. It doesn't have any limitations in terms of how many bikes we could use it on. Consumer models, you could use it up to 10 bikes, meaning 10 VIN numbers that it gets locked after it. You could either purchase the, only the Wi-Fi models can be upgraded to the Pro model. So you could pay the amount that the hex code, which is the manufacturer of this once after you used all the 10 VIN slots, or um, you know, you could just use it as it is because if you have, I don't know anyone that gets 10 bikes in a lifetime or has 
service needs for 10 BMWs. So the regular model will do just fine. And it connects right here. And then the, the catch is that you can't use a Mac. It has to be a PC. You log into the software and then I'll show you the service functions. I'm not gonna dig into that. We'll do a proper video when we get to it to show you the whole software end of it. But I'm gonna run the ABS pump and run the brake bleed procedure right now so that we can get the air bubbles out of the pump if there is any in there. So this is the software side. You pick the K67 since this is a K67. We're gonna run the pump for the first time. You'll hear it as soon as I click this. And then we're supposed to hit the brakes. Oh, it's getting pressure, yeah. Now we're supposed to perform bleeding procedure one more time and then do it on the computer. You do this up to three times and then it's good. Brakes are way better than the stock brakes, you know. Of course, the the brake feel was okay, even on the stock brakes. Like the initial bite was even like even too much on the stock brakes, especially on the front ones. But then after the initial bite, the brakes are just way more powerful, mm -hmm. like so much more powerful. Like when you go, like I right now brake everywhere one finger. Yeah. Like no matter what speeds I was going, you know, the always I'm one finger braking. So I'm super happy with the brakes. And after all, like, you know, they're not just braking good, but they also look amazing. So I think it did, you know, whatever it costs, it's worth it. Guys, that's it. We got the Gale Speed Master Cylinder on the K67S1000RR. Michael's bike was already looking good, but now it looks amazing. And to my OCD, and Michael has OCD too, this reservoir has gone out of here and the trellis rear subframe of the S1000 is one of the defining design features that was introduced with the K67. Now when you look at the bike, it looks amazing. And this Gale Speed Master with the integrated reservoir, it looks spot on. It looks, uh, it looks like an expensive piece because of the color of it, I really like it. And Michael opted for the red spring that matches his rear shock. And uh, I think it looks great. By no means this is an instructional video, so Take it as it is. We just wanted to show you kind of the behind the scenes and how we go on about fitting something on a bike that we've never done before. And to my knowledge, this hasn't been done by anybody else because we searched online to see if we have any kind of indication of if this will fit the bike or not. We just knew some of the steps that we might have to take because we've done it on other bikes before, like the R1M. And we tried it on the Ducatis, but we kind of gave up because it was way too much work. Not for us, but I want you guys to be able to take this somewhere to a, to a mechanic who is a licensed mechanic that can do this type of work and be sure that they're going to be able to fit it onto your bike. And if you want this master cylinder, there's going to be a link in the description below. I think there's going to be two options. If you want to modify it yourself and put it on, we'll just sell you the master cylinder as it, as it is. And don't forget, this is the 45 degree master, not the 90 degree master. And also there'll be an option for you guys to let us modify that master cylinder so that you guys receive it and it'll be an easier process of putting it on. And if you guys select that option, please give us a few days so that we can fit it into our schedule to do what we have to do to it before we send it out to you guys. And if you guys are in a rush, um, always, you know, you could call us, email us, let us know so that we could give you some sort of a lead time so that you, you're not caught off guard. But anyways, this is it. I think the bike is looking amazing. If you haven't seen the previous video of this bike, we put the Brembo brake upgrade on this bike. I think it's a worthwhile video to watch because these brakes are amazing and they feel amazing. And Michael was extremely surprised and happy. He was actually very happy with the brakes on this bike to, give, to begin with. But I think now he really is converted to the Brembo crew, let's say, because he now has it on his bike and he's put some miles on it and he really likes it. But that's it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.